Hey guys, welcome to Anatomy 101 with Here's My Art Ash. If you don't know who Here's My Art Ash is, well then get off off your ash and look at the person that made this video. That is me. Um, I asked you guys what you wanted to see and you guys overwhelmingly said, give us an anatomy tutorial. Ah! So that's what I'm here doing. Uh, it's not going to be the most in-depth thing, but I'm going to give you guys a lot of tips and tricks that I use every day when I'm drawing characters or figures. So please like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and let's get on with the tutorial, I guess, right? What we're going to start with is the three movable masses. Now, what are the three movable masses? They're gonna be the three parts of you that move the most besides your limbs, of course. Your limbs are all crazy. But we have our skull, we have our torso, and we have our pelvis. Oh, beautiful. Every part of us is beautiful, I believe that. But by manipulating the ways that these three masses move and understanding their proportions and the ratio to each other, um, this is really going to help you significantly. I know that this really helped me a lot. Um, it's kind of subjective, as you can see. I don't exactly make them all the same in those different three poses, but I do use them in different ways to create different figures. And next, we have just a little rule of thumb. Your figure should primarily be seven and a half heads tall. Now, I don't always follow this rule myself. I don't really ever take my head and then measure my bodies. I kind of just know how they should look at this point. But if you're first starting out and you don't know how tall or short you should be making a figure, this is something really good to keep in mind. Now, of course not all characters are like that. Look at the Hulk. The Hulk is definitely not seven and a half heads tall. And look at a baby. That would be a terrifying baby if it was seven and a half heads tall. Yikes. Now for this next part, I'm going to be fleshing out the skeleton a little bit. Ha ha ha. Get it? Fleshing out. It's so punny. I'm hilarious. I'm not tired at all. But I'm going to be showing you guys kind of what the basic shapes are. Um, here's a rule of thumb is that your head or your face should be the same length as your sternum. That is something that has oddly really helped me, especially when I love to make the ribcage way too big or way too long, you know. I'm like, okay, sternum, face, should be equal. Boom, kind of got the top half already done then. So here I am just drawing, you know, the limbs. I'm not gonna get too crazy with um, talking about the arms and legs because I don't wanna get, you know, too in depth with this. Otherwise we'd be here for a lot longer than a few minutes. Um, here's another thing, look at that. The pelvis is a bowl shape. You know, the tops of the bowl are where your hip bones come. That's just like another little tip trick. I don't know. That's how they described it to me in school. Now look at this profile shot. You can see the mandible or your jaw comes at really around the middle of your head. And your ear is just a little bit right right behind that. Yeah, I know. Creepy, right? Uh-huh. You should see the other guys. Um, but your your eyes will also be around the middle of your head, too. Now, for this, I did a profile, a front view, and a three-quarter view, which we love so much. And um, some of those cool, awesome figure drawing <laughs> terms, we have anterior and posterior. So your anterior is going to be the front of your body. The posterior is going to be the back, where your posty Maloney is. The top of your head is the superior, so guess what your bottom is? Haha, <laughs> where all of them bow down is the inferior. All your inferiors should bow down to you. That's kind of how I remember it. But let's talk about body landmarks and what these are. Now, these are going to be parts of the body of the figure that you draw that are going to stick out, you know, through the skin. The parts of the skeleton you can see on the real person, the body, you know. And some of these examples are like your collarbone. You know, your spine, sometimes with certain individuals, you can definitely see a lot of the spine. Um, there's one certain vertebrae that I'll draw that really stands out. Um, and there's the hip bone, like I just did right there. That's the spine vertebrae I'm talking about in the back there, right there where the neck kind of meets the, the back of the rib cage and everything. But there's a ton of body landmarks. 
Um, I don't know why I circled the butt. I think I was just being funny. But everything else is pretty accurate here. All those bony little parts that you can see. Mmm, delicious. Drawing those really adds a lot of depth. Now moving on, we're going to talk about posing. What the hell is posing, man? You're a poser. We're all posers, aren't we? <laughs> well, posing is really just like us manipulating the figure to put it in whatever way we want it. They're basically like little puppets, you know? You gotta make them do whatever the hell we want. It's pretty awesome. You can have them moving, you can have them standing, you can have them sitting down. But how do we, like, achieve this, you know? When I first started out, I wouldn't draw anything that wasn't above the neck. Yeah, I had a real hard time doing a full body. Um, I suggest looking at a lot of references, you know? But let's talk about the perspective first. All of these figures are on an XY plane, okay? They're very basic, you know? Your perspective isn't going to be all crazy. Because otherwise, we would have to talk about, you know, stuff like foreshortening, as you'll see right here. This is all of our three movable masses all stacked on top of each other in a way that, you know, gives the illusion we're looking down or up or wherever. But that's a little too hard for us right now. So we're going to talk about on an XY axis. And there's some really cool things to consider, like lines of motion. It's actually called lines of action, okay, but I thought it was called lines of motion, so we're just gonna ignore that I was wrong because I'm never wrong, I'm always right. Huh. Anyways, who's doing the tutorial here? Not you. Not you. It's me. So let's see. I'm kind of using this base rough line of action to do this little pose right here. Okay, so we have a person moving, you know, we're tilted. I put a wall behind him for a second because I was scared they were going to fall over. Oh no, topsy-turvy. But you can see our figure is kind of moving back in space. They have their weight distributed. And here's the only tips that I'm going to give on the arms and the legs. So for the arms, how do we get normal looking arms? Look at how long that forearm is compared to that upper arm. That looks crazy. So... We know that the upper arm and the forearm should roughly be the same length, so I like to use this little triangle method I saw on Tumblr about 50 billion years ago, where you can extend a point from a line that connects both the shoulder and the hand out to find where your elbow is going to be. I do this a lot, you know. Um, even when I'm doing perspective, I think it helps. And if you're asking why it looks slightly different on the figure versus my example, it's because the shoulder is back further in space, and the hand is up further. Now for your legs, I like to really accentuate the muscles. We have the quads and the gastrocnemius, which I spelled incorrectly, but we're going to ignore that. Or also known as a calf. Now these kind of give that S shape, this that really like iconic kind of comic-y book leg. A juicy, muscly, thick leg, you know? So that just helps to kind of show the space and the volume it takes up. Now moving on, we want to do some poses, but we don't want them to be stagnant or rigid and unnatural like this guy. He's just standing there. Who stands there like that, man? Creepy. He looks like a robot. That's not a figure. That doesn't look believable. So I'm going to be doing a figure that's standing straight up, but I'm going to make them more believable and natural, more organic. Okay? Because we rarely see like straight shapes, you know, in the body. So look at this. I tilted all of the three movable masses in different directions, alternating. I think that this really helps a lot to draw the eye throughout the body in that little Z formation, that zigzag. Okay? Another thing to keep in mind is that we're going to be weight-bearing on that one hip. Because our weight isn't going to be evenly distributed, like in the figure on the left. Okay? We're going to be we're gonna be all sassy. Okay? We're going to be on one leg. And this is the leg that's going to be holding our weight. So our hip is going to be a little higher than the other one, right? That's a good little way to, I don't know, make it look believable. Make it look like we're, we're standing all mm, waiting for my latte in line. I don't know why it was important for you to know that knee was facing out. I just, uh, I don't know, I figured. I figured you'd want to know. And as you can see, I use that little triangle method for that arm. Um, your hand should roughly come to about, like, your mid-thigh. And as you're going to see, I'm going to tinker with this pose a little bit, you know? It's not going to always be to the T that I sketch it out as. 
Because really, when we're drawing figures, we want to do what feels right. Okay, and once you've studied a lot of anatomy, you can kind of get the basic feel. See, here's the same pose, but with that line of motion, that line of action right there. It feels natural. Now I'm going to be um, drawing some quick thumbnails to decide what kind of figure I want to draw for you guys so I can shade it and show you all the juicy, delicious parts of the body. But as you can see, I'm kind of keeping these very loose and gestural as to help keep that organic feeling. You know, trying to keep the body looking natural. We really, really want to emphasize the natural and not very static. We want dynamic and flowing movement with the body. Um, and being very loose and gestural is going to help you a lot with doing that. Now, some real tips for what I think you guys should do. If you're trying to get better with your characters, with your figures, I would go and study the skeletal anatomy and then the muscle groups. Those two alone are really going to make your drawings look convincing and they'll even help you with your own styles and seeing what kind of parts you like to emphasize, what you like to downplay, you know. It's going to really show you just not only the volume and the form of the body, but it's going to help you out with all parts of your drawing. All practicing really helps no matter what area you're doing it in. You know, and even just studying the human anatomy has helped me a lot with different things like animals or anthropomorphic characters. And I'm going to rip my headset off right now so it kind of sounds loud. Sorry. Whoops. But it'll help you just to practice, you know, and get a lot of knowledge. You know, we're all animals if you really think about it. And... And I'm not referring to us having that Tao in us, guys. I'm talking about, you know, under the surface, we have a lot of similar things going on, whether it's in our bone structure or in our muscles. It'll help you a lot. And one more thing that I really want you guys to consider, especially if you're just starting out as an artist, is to not compare yourselves to others that you might see online. Okay? There's a lot of amazing and talented artists putting out their best work online and they circulate around very frequently and it's amazing, you know, I love to support them, but it's really easy to compare ourselves and then to feel discouraged, okay? It took me so long to get where I am, so very long. I have a degree in art, you know, like that's what it kind of took for me to become the professional level I am today. But it took me practice and time and patience. Those are three things that you really need in order to become good at anything. You know, some people are naturally gifted at art. But even then, they still need to practice too. And if you're not naturally gifted, that's fine. Some of the best artists in the entire world didn't get it right away. You know, it's like you have to learn to fail in order to learn to succeed. It's that kind of lesson, morale. Like, look at me right now. Look at me messing around with this stupid pose. Like, I've changed that arm about 20 different times. It's not like I can just do something immediately off the bat and get it right the first time. Sometimes I can, and sometimes that's the requirement for the drawing. Like, you know, one line to rule them all <laughs> but but it takes some time and you just gotta try to be confident with what you have so don't compare yourselves especially don't be comparing yourselves to people that are in the industry or people that have been doing this for years oh man I remember the first person that really inspired me to do art was and I think I'm saying this right, was Varia or Viria? You know, the, the person who did all the Percy Jackson art? Yeah. And I, when I first started, constantly was comparing myself to them. You know, I was trying to do their style. I was trying to use the same kind of colors and make my characters look the same. Ah! 
Ugh, I'm so tired for some reason. But it never worked out. And it wasn't until I just kind of accepted, you know, I'm not going to be that person. I'm never going to be that person. At least not yet. And maybe someday I can be, you know, whatever. But for now, I'm me. And accepting my own art style that I really started to grow. And if you have art block, that's okay. You know, a lot of the times when I get art block and I stop for a little bit, I come back and I find that I'm even better. So it's okay to take a break. I just don't think anybody should give up on art, though. I think it's one of the most beautiful ways that we can express ourselves, especially in a society today where everybody is so disconnected, you know? Connected through the internet, maybe. But in general... I don't know, I feel like we're the loneliest society we've ever been. It kind of got really dark and deep here for a second, so I'm just going to let you, um, <laughs> I'm going to take a step back and I'm going to let you just watch this finish out, and then I'll come back um, with a few more words, so thank you guys. Enjoy the rest where I start to shade. All right, guys, I want to thank you for sticking around till the end of this video. It means a lot to me. This is my first little tutorial, so let's see how it goes. I don't know. If you guys liked it, please let me know. Comment, subscribe, hit that like button, do all the things the YouTubers say, and let me know what you guys want to see next, okay? more tutorials, more speed paints, more animatics. I'm working on an animatic right now. I'm super excited to release it to you guys. Um, but more on that soon. For now, I must keep the mystery. And as always, I really appreciate you guys. You are the backbone of this channel. You're the reason that I make my art. So I hope you have a good day, and I hope you return. See you guys next time.